Hello everyone, uh, welcome to the 19th lecture of Ed Pittel course on Scalable Data Science. I am uh, Professor Shorang Bhattacharya from Computer Science Department in IIT Kharagpur. This is the second lecture on Spark. So, in the last lecture we have seen uh, Scala and we have seen its uh, immutable uh, versus mutable variables which are vars and val uh, and then we have seen uh, functions uh, which are objects and also higher order functions and we have seen uh, lists. Uh, in this lecture uh, we are going to uh, uh, see spark. So, we will see the motivation which we have already seen we will briefly go through the motivation once again for spark then we will see what are rdds or resilient distributed data sets and then we shall we shall see some see what are actions and transformations and then finally we will see some programming examples using spark so as already mentioned uh, spark is a distributed in memory cluster computing platform for uh, iterative and interactive applications. And we have discussed about the origins and properties of spark um, and uh, we have uh, seen the background also and we have also seen that uh, what uh, so what is the benefit of this map reduce programming model which is to say that uh, the runtime can decide uh, where to run the tasks and also it can automatically recover uh, from the failures okay and we have also seen that uh, uh, for uh, iterative computations and interactive computations this kind of uh, this kind of pro uh, programming model is inefficient and also sometimes uh, more difficult to run programs in okay uh, so uh, so spark so one of the main properties of spark is that it makes these working sets a first class com, uh, concept to efficiently support uh, this kind of computations okay so uh, so the goal here is to provide distributed memory abstractions for clusters to support apps with working sets. Okay. So, working sets are basically the uh, distributed data sets on which you do various computations. Okay. Uh, at the same time uh, what you want to do is you want to retain these attractive properties of uh, fault tolerance, data locality and scalability. Okay. So, you uh, and also additionally you want to also uh, retain the property of ease of use. Okay. So, you do not want to uh, write a program for you know distributing. So, you should be able to automatically uh, schedule the tasks uh, as, as they come. And so, the solution is to uh, augment the data flow model with uh, resilient distributed data sets. So, so, what are resilient distributed data sets? So, resilient distributed data sets are immutable distributed Scala collections. So, what are Scala collections? Scala collections are uh, something like arrays, lists. Uh, maps, sets, etc. So, these are basically a collection of objects uh, either sequential collection like in uh, uh, arrays or lists or sometimes non-sequential collections like sets or maps uh, where uh, there is no particular order, but the elements are uh, together uh, are uh, a collection of elements uh, are together held in these data structures and importantly these data structures are immutable that is once you initialize them you cannot 
change their values. Okay, so, uh, from the programmer's point of view, this is what a resilient distributed data set is. Okay. Now, uh, moreover, the programmer can uh, do two types of operations on resilient distributed data sets. Okay. So, these uh, resilient distributed data sets are created and uh, managed through these kind of bulk operations such as map operation which we have already seen uh, which is to perform a particular function on a particular um, a particular uh, on all the elements of a resilient distributed data set. Uh, an operation can be something like a reduce by key which is an associative operation on a uh, set of on uh, on a set of elements uh, in an RDD. Okay. So, we will see how to use reduce by key in some time. Then one can have operations like filter uh, which basically again operates on uh, every element of an RDD or every record of an RDD and we can have operations like join which uh, join the records in two different RDDs based on the key uh, the the keys of those records. Okay. Uh, so, the thing about transformations is that all transformations uh, when applied on one or more RDDs create new RDDs. Okay. So, this is the property of a transformation. On the other hand, there is another class of actions like reduce, collect, etcetera. So, reduce action for example, takes in a function uh, which operates on elements of an RDD and then finally, uh, produces a single value or a single object. Similarly, collect produces a local object or a local list from an RDD. So, if you call collect on an RDD, it will take all the elements of that RDD and produce a local Scala uh, array or a Scala object. Similarly, count will just count the number of records in an RDD and so on and so forth. The common thing about these actions is that they operate on uh, an RDD and they report values or they return values. So, they do not create any new RDDs. Okay. So, this is a major difference. Okay. So, as you can as you will see these are seamlessly integrated into the Scala program. Now, another important thing is that RDDs are conceptual objects. So, these collections in spark are uh, for the understanding of the programmer but in reality uh, they may not exist. So, they are exist or they exist or they are materialized only when needed. Okay. So, just because you define an RDD does not mean that the RDD is computed. Okay. Mm. And then, uh, so RDDs can be fairly large. Okay. So, you can have very, very large distributed RDDs. So, uh, RDDs have the capability. So, it may not fit into the main memory of the cluster. So, in that case there is the facility of RDDs being cached onto disk. So, portions of the RDD may be written onto disk or even sometimes they can be cached onto memory. Okay. Uh, another thing is that since RDDs are these distributed collections and the basically so the RDD data is uh, distributed into different splits on different machines. So, fault tolerance basically means that uh, if a certain portion of an RDD also called a split of an RDD is lost let us say uh, because you are doing big data computation on thousands of server and one of the server is lost. Okay. Then the Spark framework 
has the capability to recompute only those lost splits without you know computing the other splits. Okay, so, again what is an RDD? So, an RDD is an immutable partitioned and logical connection of records. We have already discussed what it means to say immutable which means that an RDD uh, from the point of uh, from the uh, point of view of logic cannot be changed. So, once you define an RDD the RDD remains the same. If you do some operations like transformations on this RDD a new RDD is created. Okay. These are partitioned in the sense that these are split into different portions or also sometimes called partitions or splits and each split can uh, stay on different machines of a cluster depending on the requirement. And these are logical connections as we have said because they need not always exist. So, even if uh, we actually um, define an RDD, the actual data of that RDD may not be computed which may be really large. Instead, what is present is the information to build this RDD from the data set which is there in the stable storage. Okay. So, partitioning can be based uh, in many ways either on key or using some hash uh, value uh, and uh, as we have discussed typically RDDs are created using bulk transformations which are also called transformations on other RDDs and they can be cached for future reuse. Okay. So, here is a slightly more complete list of transformations which define new RDDs and actions which compute value. Okay. So, now RDDs uh, maintain what is called a lineage information to construct lost partition. So, even before this uh, let us see, uh, so, so let us see an RDD program. Okay. So, uh, so suppose you have, uh, 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 you have a file which has, uh, so, so let us say here you would provide a file name. Okay. So, suppose you have a file which has a lot of error messages okay. uh, or something like let us say a web server log or a, uh, or a operating system log. Okay. So, you will have some information messages and you will have some error messages. Okay. Now, these files are typically very large. Okay. And Suppose you want to do some processing where you want to extract the messages of the errors. Okay. So, the errors which have occurred you want the messages of that. Okay. So, the first command is called the text file command. Okay. So, the text file command creates it is one of the ways of creating an RDD. So, there are broadly two ways of creating an RDD. One is the text file using the text file command which creates an RDD from a DFS file. So, it creates an RDD from a distributed file system file and the other command is called the parallelize command. Okay. So, this creates an RDD from a local array. So, you can pass it a local array and it will create an RDD. Okay. So, in this case we are creating an RDD from a text file command. Okay. So, the output of this is an RDD. On that RDD we are calling the filter operation which 
So, this underscore here as we have seen means that it is a function literal which takes in the a particular argument which is there in underscore and then call the contains function on this with the string error. So, if the string pass to filter contains the string error then it is evaluated to positive otherwise negative and then this filter is a transformation. Okay. So, the filter is a transformation which creates a new RDD with only those lines which contain the error file okay. uh, the, the string error okay. and then on this filtered RDD we apply the map function with the split command. So, the split command so, typically your uh, file will have this format that you will have error error and then tab and then the actual error message may be uh, some, some sort of an error message. Okay. What you want is you want to extract this error message. So, you split the line into two and you only take the second field of the uh, of the error and create a new RDD which has only the second field. And finally, the cache command says that the resultant RDD can be very large. So, you either store it uh, on memory if it is possible otherwise you store it onto a disk. So, this creates a new RDD called cached messages. Okay. So, this the resultant of all these operations is a new RDD called cached messages. Okay. And uh, so, now when you give this command this RDD cached messages is created, but the actual cached message data is not created. Instead what is created is a lineage graph something like this. So, this is a lineage graph that is created. Okay. So, what is the lineage graph? Lineage graph is that you first have an HDFS RDD which is the output of this text file. Then you have a filtered RDD which is output of this filter command. Then you have a mapped RDD which is the output of this map command and then finally, you have a cached RDD. Moreover, you have these dependencies. So, you have that in order to compute filter RDD, you have to compute this HDFS RDD and so on and so forth. So, you have all the RDDs and you have all the dependencies among the RDD. So, this forms a graph in general. In fact, it forms a directed acyclic graph as we shall see. Okay. So, this directed acyclic graph is also called a lineage graph. Okay. Now, how does a Spark program work? So, we have already seen how the Hadoop program works. So, Spark program works in a similar context. You have a driver program which is written which is a user program written mostly in Scala or it can be also written in uh, it can be also written in uh, uh, Python when you are using something like a spy spark, but for this class we will use mostly uh, Scala okay. and in this there is a object called spark context. Okay. So, spark context object is something like the job object in, uh, in um, Hadoop where basically uh, this is the object which collects to a spark cluster okay, which connects rather to a spark cluster and then it does all the distributed operations. Okay. So, whenever you create an RDD, you create an RDD using a spark context object. So, you will have to call something like sc dot text file. 
Okay, so where SC is a spark context object. Okay, so all the RDDs are created using this spark context object. Now, in practice, what happens is the spark context object has the code to contact the cluster manager, which creates some executors nodes when when a spark job needs to be executed. That is when uh, RDD needs to be materialized. Okay? So, whenever, so when you define an RDD, uh, nothing happens. So, uh, so, the cluster need not be contacted, only the lineage graph needs to be built. So, that is done within the driver program. But whenever you uh, RDD needs to be materialized, uh, which is when actions are called on an RDD, we will come to that. Uh, the basically the spark context will contact the cluster manager and it will create a lot of worker nodes for the uh, for the spark job to be executed okay and uh, each of these worker nodes will spawn a certain number of tasks which will then execute all the all the tasks uh, which are needed for materializing all the partitions of the rdd Okay, so, in general, this is the structure of a Spark program. Okay, now, let us see how the Spark program, Spark is, uh, so for example, any map reduce program can be, uh, you know, uh, created or rather uh, can be, um, can be mimicked using the uh, spark platform. So, first of all uh, in map reduce you specify two functions. So, the first is the mapper and the second is the reducer. So, in this case the mapper function is called my map function and the reducer reducer function is called my reduce func. Okay. So, uh, so, in this case basically as you can see, suppose data is an RDD, okay, which is storing the input data set of a MapReduce function. So, in case of remember, in case of uh, MapReduce, your input comes from a HDFS file, but in case of RDD or in case of Spark, your input can come from an RDD. So, let data be that input RDD and finally, you will get the output RDD which is the result. Okay. So, then you can call the flat map function which basically takes in every record which is there in rec of the RDD data okay, and it passes through my map func and creates which creates the output records. The output records are of form key value pair okay. and then what you can do is you can just uh, uh, so, so basically my map func remember can produce multiple output records. So, flat map basically creates an RDD with, uh, with, with multi which is uh, with multiple output records per input record. So, each input record may result in multiple output records for the RDD. Okay. Then you use a group by key function which is just a shuffle function. So, it basically takes all records with the same key and groups them together and then finally, you just apply the, uh, the reduce function with the key and the value. Okay, so, my reduce function takes the key and the value and, uh, and outputs the reducer output record which is the which is the output of each of the records okay. and basically this is applied on the map data. Okay. So, this is one way of reproducing the map reduce functionality in spark. Okay. Another way can be 
using combiner functions where instead of group by key you use the uh, reduce by key command which first groups by key and then also uh, acts the combiner or puts the combiner in the uh, in the first uh, in the um, in each reducer record okay mm. okay so how will one uh, execute uh, word count in spark okay so as you can see the first line is creating uh, rdd called lines using this so this is the spark context object so it is calling the text file uh, command on the spark context object and creating the rdd lines next it is calling flat map on lines so that it splits the line into words using white space and then for each word it is outputting uh, just the word after this it is just uh, doing a reduce by key operation uh, and it is just adding so reduce by key uh, takes in two functions okay so reduce by key uh, or rather uh, reduce by key actually takes in a function with two arguments so this function is actually a function of this type int comma y int and then it produces the output let us say z which is of type int okay? and in this particular case your z is nothing but x plus y. Okay? So, this is what it is saying that it is taking in two arguments and basically computing the sum of those two arguments. Now, when reduce by key function is called to the records of an RDD, what it does is basically it takes all the records A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D like this and then it takes pairs of records in random order. So, let us say so, it has to be associative, the function has to be associative. So, it may first compute a plus b and then apply the result and c. So, it will apply a plus b and c and then again it will take a plus b plus c and then apply it to d and so on and so forth. So, this it may do in arbitrary order. So, it can form a reduction graph. So, it can either compute a plus b plus c and then plus d or it can compute a plus b and c plus d separately and then add the two. Okay. So, this is what any reduce or reduce by key operation does. and then finally it is saving it to a hdfs file okay now let us take the problem of matrix multiplication okay so so the input here is that you are given a matrix which is of this form list of row index column index and value so for example if you have a 2 cross 2 matrix of 1 0 0 1 then it will be represented as 1 comma 1 comma 1 1 comma 2 comma 0 2 comma 1 comma 0 and 2 comma 2 comma 1. So, this will be your RDD. Okay? So, this is how you represent this matrix. Okay. Uh, now, let us say there are m cross k and k cross n matrices. So, then there will be two matrices A and B. Okay. So, then you take, so, so you know that for each row of A, so if you have to compute A times B for each row of a you have to compute 
uh, for each you have to compute one entry for each row of A and each column of B. Okay. So, hence your mapper key uh, for the for the first so so your mapper key for the if if you have the first matrix should be the row index of the first matrix okay and if it is the second matrix your mapper key should be the column index of the second matrix so it should either be the row index of the first matrix or the column index of the uh, second matrix okay and uh, and your uh, sorry your your mapper key should be the the row index of the second matrix and the column index of the uh, of the first matrix okay let me let me start again so your mapper key should be so you should have an output for all so all row index of the first matrix and all column index of second matrix should come to one place okay so this so this should be your mapper keys okay and your mapper value should have the either the column index of the first matrix or the row index of the second matrix and then it should also contain the value okay so now when in the reducer you get you get all the row indices and the all the column indices corresponding to uh, corresponding to the first so so corresponding to all the a particular row and all the columns and a particular column so this for the first matrix and a particular column for the second matrix okay you can just match the corresponding row or the column indices so and then you take the product of the corresponding values and you sum them. So, in other words if you have a i k and you have b k j you just sum over all values of k and this becomes your resultant c i j entry. Okay. So, your, uh, so so, you can compute this in a distributed manner using this particular algorithm. Okay. The next very important application is the logistic regression application which is used for binary classification. So, we have seen this application. So, you have the binary classification problem where you have the labels as plus 1 and minus 1 and you have the sigmoid of w transpose sigmoid of uh, y minus y times w transpose x as uh, as the probability of y and then you have to minimize this particular loss function in a distributed manner. Okay. and you have the gradient which is given by this function you can check that the gradient of the loss function is given by this function and your algorithm for computing w is something like this. Okay. Now, the question is how will you implement this algorithm? So, this is the gradient descent update that you want to implement. So, this is a simple spark program that tries to implement that algorithm. Okay. So, first you have 
an RDD x the records of which are data points for the data set. So, this RDD x has both x and y in the logistic regression parlance and then you have a local variable w in the driver program which stores the weights of each of these um, each of these matrices uh, or uh, weights for the logistic regression ok. So, the first you have to have a gradient function ok which computes the gradient of uh, of a data set or a subset of data A let us say A is equal to x 1 y 1 till x k y k ok. So, this gradient function should compute the gradient given this data set A ok and then you can just the reduce function just adds those gradients ok. So, why is this working? This is working because if you see here your gradient is actually sum over the gradients of all data points ok. So, if i is the index of the gradient of the data points and if you sum over the gradient of all data points you get the total gradient of the objective function you have to subtract at a later time the regularizer, but for the timing you can also assume lambda to be 0 ok. So, if this is the case you can you can compute the total gradient in a distributed manner using this line of code that is you compute for each subset of data the gradient with respect to that subset of data. Of course, for computing the gradient you need the current parameter value which is a local variable. So, it has to be passed to this as a closure. So, this is a closure that is passed to each and every server in order to compute the gradient of uh, this particular value and then you sum the gradients ok. And then S is another function which given the gradient direction and the, uh, the parameter current parameter w computes the step length ok. And then in the local machine you just update the parameter w. So, just to give you a feeling of how this program would work. So, if you have many many machines and you have a very large data set. So, let us say you have 1 billion data points each having 1 million feature ok. So, then you would have a central machine where you would have the parameter w which is of size 1 million. And now you have a data matrix which is x which is stored as an RDD which is of size 1 billion cross 1 million because it has 1 billion data points each of which is of size 1 million. So, then each of these each of these uh, machines. So, this is distributed in each of these machines. So, this may have 20 million of the data, this may have another 20 million of the data and so on and so forth and it may be distributed onto 5 machines. Now, the gradient computation happens parallelly in each of these machines and then the sum is computed in the local machine and then the update is also computed in the local machine. So, that computer uh, computation is order 1 million whereas, the computation on these distributed machines is of order billion. So, hence it will result 
in a speed up of the total computation. So, these are some, some results of implementing this, uh, implementing this uh, program using the MapReduce paradigm. So, here in the x axis you can see the number of nodes okay? and in the y axis you can see the, uh, the time taken in seconds. So, you can see that init initially there is a larger drop as you increase the number of nodes from 5 to 10, but as you keep on increasing the number of nodes after a while it saturates. Okay. We take the last example here which is the example of the page rank algorithm which is actually a very complex algorithm to implement. Okay. So, what is the page rank algorithm? The page rank algorithm is used to compute the score of uh, web pages using the link structure of those web pages. So, we all know that web pages point to other web pages or they have links to other web pages. So, the idea behind uh, page rank is very simple. The idea is that if a page receives links from many other pages or many other high ranking pages, then it has a very high rank. Whereas, if a high ranking page points to another page, then the page that it points to will also receive a very high rank. So, so this is the, uh, this is the idea. Okay. So, many, so for example, in this case, uh, these are many low ranking pages which are pointing to this high ranking page. So, this receives a somewhat higher rank okay. and these are other somewhat high ranking pages which are pointing to these, this page. So, this is a very high ranking page and now this page is pointing to this page. So, this page has a intermediate rank, but this page points to again these pages. Okay. So, so, mathematically the way this works is the following. Okay. So, you start uh, uh, with the rank or the score of each page as being 1 and then uh, on each iteration you have a page P contribute the rank of P by the number of neighbors of P to its uh, neighbors and then, uh, and then you just take the sum of all the contributions from all the incoming links and multiply it with 0.85 and then add 0.15. Okay. So, this is the page rank algorithm. So, for example, you start with 1 for all of these, then uh, because so this, this web page contributes 0.5 to both of its neighbors. So, this web page contributes 0.5 because it has two outgoing links. This contributes 1, this contributes 0.5 because it has again two outgoing links and this contributes 1. Okay. So, at the end of the first iteration, the, the page rank of this will remain 1, the page rank of this sorry, the page rank of this will become 0.58 sorry yeah so and the page rank of this will become 0.15 okay now you can go forward further and then again these are the contributions in green and you can see that now the page rank of this one has become 1.72 because a high ranking page is pointing here and this has reduced a little bit and so on and so forth and you keep doing like this and it will converge to this one being 1.37, this one being 0.46 and so on and so forth. So, this is the algorithm. Now, 
The question is how will we implement this algorithm in Spark? So, for this we need two RDDs. Okay? So, the first RDD is the links RDD which stores uh, the, the URL. So, so, for each URL it stores uh, it the neighbors of that URL or the URLs that uh, point to the this particular URL okay? or rather the URLs that this current URL points to. Okay? And the second RDD stores a URL and its rank. Okay? Now, what you do is you take the links RDD and you join it with the ranks RDD. So, now you have for each URL its neighbors, so the URL that it points to and you have the rank of the current URL. Okay? So, what you do is you take out the neighbors for from this URL and for all the neighbors you emit one record which has the following. So, it has the URL of that particular neighbor and it has the rank of the current URL divided by the size of the neighbors. Okay? So, this is basically doing all the contributions to all the neighbors. Okay? So, we call this RDD the contrib's RDD. Okay? Now, this contrib's RDD takes, uh, so, so now then you call the reduce by key on this contrib's RDD because the key here is the URL which is receiving this contribution because which is the neighbor of the current URL. Okay? And those uh, contributions get added up and then finally, for each of these you uh, each, so this creates an RDD with all the contributions and then you multiply that with 0.15 and uh, uh, or multiply that with 0.85 and add 0.1 and then you get the new rank RDD of the uh, for each URL. So, then you keep doing this for uh, 1 to a certain number of iterations at the time when this algorithm will convert. So, this is a spark implementation of the page rank algorithm. So, in conclusion we have seen uh, the motivation RDD and we have seen what are uh, what are actions and transformations and then we have seen these three programming examples using spark. Thank you.